need to talk about the sequence first. So this is uh, what we hope to be able to do tonight. Okay, or now, or wherever you are watching this one. Okay, so this is going to be section 11.1. .1. It's going to be chapter 11 from now on. Okay, and the idea is what is a sequence or what is going to be sequences. Okay, sequence is a function. It's a very special function. It's a function whose domain is a set of natural numbers. Okay, so if n n equal to the 1, 2, 3, etc. is the set of counting number, counting numbers, or natural numbers. Okay, natural numbers then any function. Okay, then a function, a function A from the natural number into real numbers. Okay, this function is going to be called, it's called a sequence. Okay, it's going to be called a sequence. So the domain of all the and all the sequences are going to be natural and natural numbers. And so since the domain is always the same, so what we're going to do, we are going to use a special notation. You see, we are going to define or denote the terms of the sequence by its range, if you like. Okay, so note that. So the range of the function is going to be, is the function a at one, a at 2, up to the A at N, forever. It's like F of 1, F of 2, F of 3. So if these are going to be our values of the, <coughs> of the sequence, okay, then we are going to use a special notation. Then we write you see, instead of a1, we are going to change it a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub n. So we write a of n equal to the a sub n, when n is equal to the 1, 2, 3, etc. Okay, so we denote the sequence by <coughs> the, the point in its uh, range. Okay, this is going to be the 1. So we write this one and a n. A n is going to be called, okay, it's called the n, the n term, the n term, or the general term, or the general, okay, the general term of a sequence, okay? this is going to be the case. So if you like some examples of the sequences, okay, so it's going to be general term and I use the notation. And so uh, uh, this is going to be called uh, the general terms of the, of a, uh, okay, of a sequence. Sequence in this case, in this case, okay, there you are, a n, this notation, or sometimes this notation, is going to be, is a sequence whose term, whose end term, end term is a n. So when we see this notation, then, you know, we realize, you know, we know it. It's like a function. You see the function would be denoted by f of x. This is denoted by f of n. 
because the domain is, you see X in calculus, when you say F of X, X is a free agent, can be any real number, decimals, fractions, etc. But when you work with a sequence, you cannot use any real number. You can only use counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so that's why uh, what uh, we are going to do is, we are going to just this notation a n and use this new, new notation that we're going to have, okay? So example, so the example that we have, the, the first one, a sequence a n. If it's going to be a sequence a n, so this means this is a sequence whose general term is one over n. One over n for n equal to one, two, three, etc. So if you replace the n by one, that give you one. If you replace n by two, that give one half, one third, etc. So that's going to be the one. So if you like one, one half, one third, a quarter, etc. These are going to be our the terms of the of the sequence. Okay, it's a function, but you have to use the notation, you know, proper notation you're going to have. Or uh, if you want another one, this uh, sequence negative one to the n is very popular. Okay, this is going to be a sequence whose general term is negative one to the n, or n equal to the one, two, three, etc. <coughs> You see, if you replace the n by one, that give a negative one. But if you replace n by two, that give a positive one. So negative, positive, negative, positive. So this is going to be the case. You see the first term would be negative, but the second term would be positive. If you replace n by three, that give a negative. Negative, positive, etc. So these are going to be our terms, okay, terms of the, of the sequence. Okay, so you know it can have you know you can have a sine n, cosine n as your you know your your sequence here. Okay, so this is going to be the definition of a sequence. As I talk about it, this is a function. It's a function whose dom its domain is not going to be all real numbers. The domain of this function is going to be just set of natural numbers. Now we want to know what is going to be the the limit of the sequence. Okay, so what is the limit? The limit of a sequence. The limit of the sequence. You see, as we talk about that, the sequence is a function. Since it's a function, so we can find it. You can write the, the the limit of this function. Okay, but we are going to be interested in the limit of this function when n goes to infinity. Okay, so this is how we're going to do it. So uh, we are going to note that. And note that a, a sequence, okay, a sequence is just a function, is a function, it's going to be the function defined, okay, defined on n, not r, defined on n. So what we're going to do, we are going to define the limit of the sequence. Okay, we defined the we defined the limit the limit okay limit of the function at infinity as we did it before we defined the limit of the function at infinity as in calculus one okay infinity for a, okay, for a sequence, for a sequence. Okay, so uh, therefore, therefore, if we say that the limit of a sequence, limit of a n, 
when n goes to infinity, positive infinity, is equal to the L. It's like in calculus one, you know that this means as n increases without bound, means going to the infinity, the terms of the n getting closer and closer to the to the L. Okay, so therefore this is going to be limited up. A and n goes to infinity would be L if and only if these a n's are going to be close, approximately equal to the L as n increases. N increases without bond. Without bond. That's the same thing that's telling you now you that n goes to uh, n goes to infinity to get this number. Okay, so it's nothing new because it's just a function. It's a function, so whatever you did for the limit at infinity for a function, calculus one, you can do the same thing over here. Now, if you can find the limit of a sequence, means if this limit exists, we say that this sequence converges or it's convergent. If this limit does not exist, we say that this sequence diverges. When the sequence diverges, there is no limit for the for the sequence. Okay, so we continue. Uh, there you are. So if uh, that, you know, if you can find that limit, so we continue. If limit of a n n goes to infinity equal to the l. Okay, if this is exists, then the sequence, then the, the sequence, the sequence a n is set to be, okay, is set to be, is set to be converges, okay or said to be, you know, it's convergent, if you like. So if the sequence AN is, if the sequence of AN, if the limit of the sequence does exist, then the sequence AN said to be convergent, okay, to be convergent. Or we say that the sequence AN converges. Okay, converges to L. And sometimes we write, okay, we write A N converges to L. If you write this one, everybody understand what are you talking about. Okay, otherwise, otherwise the sequence means, otherwise means if you cannot find that limit, the sequence A N, diverges, is divergent, is divergent. So divergent means you cannot find the limits. Convergent means there is a limit, okay? So this means, you know, when you say, uh, when and getting bigger and bigger and bigger, this A ends getting closer and closer to the, okay, to the, to the L, to be able to, uh, to take care of it. Uh, okay, so just uh, some easy example, and then we're going to extend it in a minute. So what's going to be example? Uh, so the first example is going to be, you see the sequence uh, A over N. Okay, the sequence one over N uh, converges to zero, if you like, is convergent is a convergent. Why? Because, note that, if you want to find the limit of one over n, when n goes to infinity, you know that the numbers are getting bigger and bigger, so this would be, this would be zero. Okay, so one over n converges to zero, if you like. Okay, so the sequence one over n is convergent is a convergent convergent sequence. OK, 
okay, it's convergent, it's convergent to zero because the limit is going to be zero. Okay, but uh, this sequence, if you consider sequence to be n squared, you know that the limit of n squared when n goes to infinity would be infinity. So this sequence is a divergent sequence, is a divergent, divergent sequence. Okay, note that, note that the limit of n squared, when it goes to infinity, you see this would be a positive infinity. So it's not, uh, okay, it's not zero, it's not, a, it's not a fixed number. So in this case, the sequence is going to be divergent. Okay, the other popular one is this one. Uh, okay, the sequence that we're going to consider is this one. Negative one to the n. We're going to use this one quite a lot. Okay, this is also a divergent sequence. Is a divergent, divergent sequence. Because it's going to be one negative one, one negative one, so we cannot fix it. So if you want uh, to, to prove it, you see note that if uh, a sub n is equal to the negative to the n, then uh, you are going to have two cases. Then you see if n is going to be an even number. So if you want, you can consider a sub 2n is going to be a negative one to the two n. Two n is a positive, is an even number, so this would be one. So this means in this case, uh, okay, and this would imply that this uh, sequence maybe converges to one. Okay, so if you're just using the even numbers for the n, it seems to be converges to one. But if you use odd number, you see two n minus one. 2n minus 1 means, uh, you know, when it's odd, negative to the odd power. Okay, negative to the odd power. 2n minus 1 or 2n plus 1, doesn't matter. Okay. And so in this case, this would be what? This would be a negative 1. So this means the terms of the sequence may be converges to the negative 1. So for the even, for many, many of the values, with the even index, this converges to a positive one. But for some others, it converges to the negative one. So one is not equal to the negative one. So this means the limit of a n, n goes to infinity, does not exist. Okay, so this, uh, since this limit does not exist, so this means basically, so the sequence negative one to the n, diverges. It's a very popular sequence, we are going to use it quite a lot from now on, but anytime you claim that this is going to be divergent, we understand it. And you better know the, you know, the, know the, the reason that we're going to do. Okay, now uh, the thing is that we got to be careful is, you see you have this type of limit. In the history of calculus, they talk about the limit of the sequence first and then they change it to the limit of the function. But uh, the way you studied, uh, we studied calculus, uh, we did the limit of the function right at the beginning of calculus one, and then we get to the sequence. Now, there is a theorem that connects uh, these two parts together, and that would be very helpful for you to be able to apply all the theorems that you already got for the, okay, the general function for the, for the sequences. And that's quite interesting uh, uh, result. And that result is that if a sequence is given to like a n, so what you can do, you can replace the n by x, make it into the f of x, the limit of f of x. Then for the limit of f of x, you can use any theorem from the past. 
if the limit of f of x when x goes to infinity does exist, and suppose this is equal to the 5, then you can conclude that the limit of fn n goes to infinity would be 5 too. Because if it's going to be true for x, this means it's true for all real numbers. When it's true for all real numbers, so this must be true also for the, okay, only positive integers. And that would be very helpful. So I'm going to give you this one as the, uh, okay, as a, as a theorem, if you like. And that's going to be a great theorem, you know, help quite a lot. And it's something, uh, something natural, okay? You don't need to prove it. It's common sense. So what is going to be this uh, common sense? Uh, the, the case is uh, going to be, you see, if, if this limit, limit of f of x, okay, when x goes to positive infinity, does exist and is equal to the L, like in calculus one. Okay, and this is going to be the case. And if you define f of n to be equal to the a n, or n equal to the one, two, three, etc. So this simply means if you replace the x by n, that gives you f of n. When it's f of n, you, you can talk about f of one, f of two, f of three. But when it's f of x, you can talk about anything you like, f of 1.5, 1.2. So this theorem will tell you that if you replace it by x and this limit tax exists, okay? If this is going to be the case, then the limit of a n when n goes to infinity is also equal to the L. And that helps you quite a lot. So you can replace the n by x and use any theorem that you have from the calculus one. And then apply to this one, okay? so. And there are many, many cases. We are going to check all of them, okay? So if the sequence a n, you replace the n by x, you take the limit and use any theorem beyond the limits that you have. If the limit does exist, then that limit would be equal to the L2, okay? So I'm going to give you various examples to see how going you know, apply this nice result. So example, you want to find the limit of each sequence, find the limit of each sequence. <coughs> okay, so we go for the first one. You see, the first one is going to be one over n. Okay. So what is going to be your result? The result is going to be solution. You see, we say note that limit of one over x, when x goes to infinity, positive infinity, you know that this is equal to the zero. We call it a pizza problem because you get pizza on the top and you divide by infinity. If you divide the pizza by infinity, so, each, you, each, your shade, if you like, is going to be nothing. Even if you divide by 10, divide by 20, a family pizza. So each uh, portion is going to be almost nothing. So since the limit of one over X, X goes to infinity is zero, then according to this theorem, if you replace the X by X, the limit of one over N, when it goes to infinity is also equal to the zero. You don't usually change it to the x. You see, I'll just give you the theorem that we're going to have. And so this means the sequence uh, converges. Okay, so the, the sequence, one over n converges. Converges because you can find it. You see, the limit of the sequence is going to be zero. So that will help you to Let's use all sorts of limits from the past. You see this one? Sequence n squared plus five over n squared plus five n plus one. So you don't need to change it to the x. We can do it right away. Now we've got the idea. 
So the solution is going to be, we find the limit of n squared plus five, and this is n squared plus five, n plus one, when it goes to infinity. We can use the idea of the calculus one limit at infinity. Remember for the polynomial, you consider the leading term. So it's going to be n goes to infinity, the leading term on the top, 10 with the highest power is going to be n squared. And over here would be n squared too. So you simplify it, that give you one. Okay, so the limit of the sequence is one. So this means that the sequence n squared plus five, n squared plus five, n plus one converges. Okay, when n goes to infinity, the limit of the n squared plus five is the same as the limit of the n squared. And the bottom one is the same thing. Or from calculus one, so to find the limit, you just take the coefficient of the top and the bottom. So one, one would be, would be one. Okay, so it's gonna be one case. Uh, the other case is going to be, if the power is gonna be different, you see this one, one over n cube plus one. You see the power of the bottom one is much, much higher and on the top, you just get a pizza. So the solution, the limit of one over n cube plus one and goes to infinity is zero. So the sequence is converges. One over n cube plus one converges or it's convergent. Okay, because we can find the limits right away. Okay, so this is the case that, uh, this case is when the power of the top and the bottom is the same. This when the power of the bottom is higher, and you always get zero. And there is going to be one more case when the power of the top is going to be higher. Okay, so which one is it? One, two, three, four. Look at the fourth one. See for the fourth one, uh, you are going to have uh, this sequence. The sequence is n squared plus one, and this is going to be n plus five. See now the power of the top is higher. When the power of the top is higher, this limit would be infinity, so the sequence is not going to be convergent. Okay, so the solution is going to be. If you want to find the limit of the n squared plus one over n plus five, when it goes to infinity, again, the leading term, term with the highest power on the top is n squared. The bottom one is n, n goes to infinity. So if you simplify it, simplify the top and the bottom, so the result would be the limit of n when n goes to positive infinity. You know that this would be positive infinity. So this sequence diverges, okay? So the sequence, the sequence n squared plus one over n plus five diverges. This means you cannot find the limit. Okay, so this is gonna be very, very popular to get. Give you another one. Uh, this sequence is also very popular. We get the sine n and the n. Okay, it can come with the cosine as well. We have a version of the tangent for this one. Okay, to get the to get the result. We want to check the limit when n goes to infinity. Okay. So the claim is that the limit of a sine n over n, n goes to infinity is zero from calculus one, if you like, but if you want to prove it, you can, you can prove it by using the squeeze theorem. Remember from calculus one, that the sine n is between one and negative one. So you want it divided by n, so just get divided by n, it's negative one over n, sine n over n, and this is gonna be one over n. So this limit, this is the way we do it in calculus one. 
Okay, this limit is zero. And this limit is also zero. So by a squeeze theorem in calculus one, a squeeze theorem, the limit of the middle one is also zero. The limit of sine n over n and goes to infinity is zero. So the sequence, okay, so the sequence converges. Converges because you can find the limit and the limit happen to be equal to the equal to the zero. Okay. So that's the one case. The other famous uh, case is the one that you have to use the orbital rule. See, look at this one, number six. You want to check this sequence, sequence of ln n over n. You see, if you want to find the limit, it's going to be infinity over infinity. You see, look at this one. Limit of the ln n over n, n goes to infinity would be infinity over infinity. Okay, for infinity over infinity, remember you have to use the Hopital rules or Lopital rule. It means uh, you have to differentiate the top and the bottom. But this is the only time that you have to change it. Remember, you cannot find the derivative of the ln n because the domain is discrete, dot, dot, dot. But you can find the limit of ln x. And then it's going to be differentiable. So anytime you want to use the Lopital rule, you have to change the n into the x, otherwise it doesn't make sense, okay? So this is how we're going to do it. So we check the limit of ln of x over x. If you don't change it to the x, you cannot differentiate it. Now you say that this is going to be the case by the Hopital rule. So it's going to be limit of x goes to passive infinity, the derivative of the ln x, the top, is going to be 1 over x and the limit of the bottom one, which is one. So that gives a limit of one over x, x goes to positive infinity, which is zero. So you go back and you conclude that your sequence, you see the limit of L and N over N, N goes to infinity, this is zero. Okay, this is zero and the sequence, you know, you don't have to add the sequence converges. Okay, these are very popular cases. So anytime you want to use the Hobbital rules, I differentiate. Diff of ln x is one over x, diff of x is one. Then uh, that make into the zero. Since you did it for the x, okay? So whichever is uh, true for the x, you get back. And this would be also true for the, uh, okay? It's going to be true when you, you know, when you're just using n rather than the, the x. So these are going to be one uh, kind of group of the, the problems that you're going to have. Uh, I can give you another one. You see, we did this one before. If you have a e to the, <coughs> okay, uh, to have uh, something nice, uh, suppose this is the one we did that. Uh, for example, n square e to the n. Okay, so you note that, we already talked about it, note that you see the limit of the n squared over e to the n when it goes to infinity. It's going to be infinity over infinity and you can use the Lopter rule to, to prove it. But uh, we already talked about it. You see the power one is just a squaring, a squaring function. But the bottom one is the exponential function. So when it goes to infinity, the bottom which we reach infinity much, much faster than the top. So that makes this one to be equal to the zero. So we accept it, otherwise you can use a couple of uh, orbital rule. Okay, so it's gonna be the one. Uh, again, if you want to use orbital rule, you have to change it to the, to the X. So we change it to the X, we consider this one, X squared 
over e to the x, x goes to passive infinity. Now this would be infinity over infinity. So this means we can use the orbital rule. So this is going to be the limit of x squared e to the x. Okay, x goes to positive infinity. Lopta rule. So that given limit of now the, the top lift of x squared would be 2x, and the e to the x is just e to the x. So this is infinity over infinity again. So you have to cont continue with the Lopta rule. So that can be limit of the top. Okay, the 2x would be 2, the derivative, and this is going to be e to the x. x goes to positive infinity, this would be 0, 2. Because again, the top is a fixed number, the bottom one is infinity. Okay, so this means, uh, so this means the original one. So limit of the original function, n squared, e to the n, when n goes to infinity, is zero. So the sequence, okay, the sequence converges. Okay, so these are various uh, techniques that we are going to use and uh, you better make a note and have them from, uh, from now on. We are going to use it over and over to get these, uh, these numbers done. Okay. Now, uh, this is uh, just uh, ordinary limit. So everything we talk about limits, now, it would be true for the sequences. For example, remember if uh, you want to find the limit of the sum of two function, it's going to be derivative of the first one plus the second one, or the limit of the first and the second one. So we are going to use this to put a kind of a combination of the sequences. So the combination means addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And we did this theorem before for the ordinary limits. So this is going to be the theorem. The theorem is that if two sequence, if uh, sequence a n and the sequence b n okay are going to be more of them convergent are convergent in the limit that exists convergent sequences okay sequences and uh, a n, the limit of the a n goes to L, and the B n goes to N. Okay, so both of them are going to be, both of them are convergent. If uh, this is going to be the case, it's like, you know, the limit of the two function does exist. You want to talk about the different combinations. So if this is going to be the case, then A n plus B n or a n minus b n goes to the l plus or minus m. Okay, so this means if two sequence are going to be convergent, then the sum of the sequences, okay, the sum of the sequences is convergent too. Okay, so this means the sum, okay, so this means sum of two Convergent sequence, convergent sequences, okay, are convergent. Okay, so if you have a two sequence which are going to be convergent, add them together, they would be convergent too. Okay, so it's going to be addition, subtraction, you can have it for the multiplication, okay, a n times bn is going to be l times n. Okay, so this means that the product, okay, the product of two convergent sequence, convergent sequences, okay, are going to be are convergent.
Okay, so the sum, the product, and also the quotient. See the, the quotient? It's gonna be a n over b n. That goes to the L over M. Of course, with the condition that M is never zero. Okay, so this means uh, the quotient. The quotient of two convergent sequence, convergent sequences, okay, is convergent. Okay, so that's all sort of you know, the, and the formula they're going to have. Okay, so this is going to be uh, the notion of a sequence. So uh, the notion of the se sequence is going to be just a function. It's a very a special function because the domain of this function is going to be all just uh, natural numbers. Uh, okay, but uh, ordinary function, the domain uh, can be all uh, real, uh, real numbers. Okay, to get these numbers. But the important part is how we're going to find these limits that I'll talk about it over here and just check them. Make sure you know how to how to, to do it. Uh, okay, so this is going to be a, a kind of a general introduction to the to the sequences that uh, we are going to have. Uh, okay, and uh, there is only one more thing about this uh, section. Let's talk about that one too, and then we are ready for the for the series. Okay, and there is one more idea that we needed for the future, okay? And uh, that is going to be something we call it the monotonic sequences. There is one theorem here that would be useful for this series. Okay, what is monotonic sequences? You see, we already talk about increasing and decreasing function, and you know it from calculus one, and the sequence is a function. So monotonic means a sequence can be increasing or decreasing, so the definition is sequence. Okay, a sequence a n is called, okay, it's called increasing. As you go, the value of the function getting bigger and bigger. So it's going to be the case if, if you see a1 is less than a2, less than a3, you just uh, keep going less than a n. So as we go on, the value of the function getting bigger and bigger. So a sequence is increasing if this is going to be the case and uh, is decreasing and is decreasing. Okay, if it's the other way around. Okay, so the, the first term is the is bigger than the second term, and that would be, so the first term is going to be bigger than every other sequence, every other terms. Okay, it's increasing as you go on, the sequence getting bigger and bigger, decreasing if it's going to be the other way around, okay? So it's going to be decreasing if, uh, okay, that's it, if this condition would, uh, would satisfy. A sequence is going to be monotonic if uh, one of these would happen. Is it going to be increasing or decreasing, okay? So a sequence, a sequence is monotonic. It's going to be monotonic if, if it is uh, either or either, okay, increasing or decreasing. Okay, so if uh, one of these happens, so in that case, the sequence can be called 
a, a monotonic a monotonic sequence okay there is a, a theorem that we are going to use in future so we need this one so let's say we're going to check if the sequence is going to be a monotonic increasing or decreasing okay we have two theorem in future both of them are going to be used this type of ideas okay example Uh, we want to, to determine if you see determine determine whether the sequence whether the sequence uh, the sequence is monotonic. Okay, monotonic means you check to see if uh, the, this sequence getting bigger and bigger. You can write, you know, a couple of terms you find out. In that case, it's going to be increasing. If the value of the sequence getting smaller to smaller, that would be decreasing. Okay, so the most the famous one is this one. See, if you list the member of the sequence, you know that they are going to be getting smaller and smaller. So for this one, okay, the sequence, the sequence is decreasing, decreasing. Decreasing because the term of the sequence, see the first term is going to be one, one half, one third, a quarter, etc. So as you can see, the, the first term one is bigger than one half, one half is bigger than one third, etc. So this is uh, going to be the case. As uh, we move on, the terms are going to be getting uh, smaller and smaller. So that's why this sequence is going to be, you know, the first term is one half. Then you get a one half, which is a smaller than one. Then we get a one there, the core there. Okay, so this is going to be a decreasing, decreasing sequence. Okay, so that was easy. But uh, this is the type that we're going to see later on. Okay, the sequence is going to be 2n uh, over n plus one. So you can write a couple of terms uh, to find out whether it's going to be increasing or decreasing. Or uh, the other way to do it is just, uh, you know that as a function, as a function, a function would be decreasing if the derivative is negative and increasing if the derivative is positive. So what you can do, you can change it to the function and you check it with the derivative. But in order to differentiate, we talk about you cannot use the end. So you have to use X. So this is what you're going to do. You are going to suppose, this is always available. Suppose F of X, a function, this is going to be two X over X plus one. You see? Now you want to know whether this is increasing or decreasing, differentiate it. So what's going to be derived of this function? You have to apply the quotient rule. If you have the top times bottom, bottom top, you see the top. If you have the top, it's going to be two times X plus one. Okay, minus the if you have the bottom times top, the if you have the bottom is going to be one times the top two X. And this is going to be X plus one, all is squared. Now, if you distribute the top, so that give you two X plus two minus two X. And this is going to be X plus one, all is squared. Okay, so uh, this is it, this uh, would be out. So what we have is f prime of x is equal to, the top, the left over is gonna be two and the bottom one is x plus one, all the square, which is always positive. Okay, so the derivative is positive, so the sequence is going to be, so the sequence, 2n 
over n plus one is uh, increasing. Okay, then you, you're done. So it's going to be important to be able you know, to take these uh, increasing or decreasing sequences. Uh, we are going to use them in future, okay, when we get to the series. We have something, we call it a series of the positive terms. And then this would be very, okay, it's going to be very, very useful, monotonic sequence. Okay, and uh, there is a theorem regarding this monotonic sequence. Uh, so I need to define, give you one more uh, definition and then I express that theorem for you. So what is this? See, this is the term bonded sequence. Bonded. What is going to be bonded sequence? is uh, the term, uh, if the terms of a sequence, all of them, are going to be less than a fixed number, you see, suppose all of them is going to be less than one. So in that case, we say that the sequence is bonded. Okay, give a definition, a sequence. Sequence AN is bonded. Bonded. If uh, there is a positive number, if there is a positive, there is a positive number. Okay, a positive number like M, such that the term of the sequence, you go with the absolute value is going to be less than equal to the M or all N. Okay, if this is going to be the case, we say it's bonded. Bonded because it's always less than, you know, less than one and less than, you know, this uh, and the numbers that we're going to have. Okay, so as an example that we did, Okay, remember the sequence, negative one uh, to the n. You see, if n happened to be an even number, the result positive one, odd number is a negative one. So the term of this sequence, if you use absolute value, is always less than one. Okay, so this is bonded. Bonded, why? Because the absolute value of a negative one to the n. Okay, is equal to one in fact, it's less than equal to one. Okay, so this is going to be bonded. But the sequence like n cube is unbonded. Because this is n cube and, and getting bigger and bigger, so the n cube would follow the same, okay, the same way. So this never is going to be, okay, uh, bonded. Okay, so why we are interested in these two concepts? If you have a, a sequence, a monotonic sequence, which is also bonded, that sequence is going to be convergent. Okay, that's a great theorem and a very, very useful for future, okay? Theorem. And that's it. So uh, if a sequence, if a sequence, a n is bonded, okay, is going to be bonded and monotonic means increasing or decreasing monotonic, then the sequence converges. Okay, then it converges. It would be very useful, you know, very useful theorem, but 
uh, practically it's uh, not easy to apply, but uh, it would be very good to, you know, to, to prove some, uh, prove some theorems when we're dealing with this type of, uh, type of, uh, type of sequences. Okay, so that's quick introduction to the, to the sequences that we're going to have. Uh, okay, so I give you some more examples next time before uh, continuing. That's 11.1, .1, the sequence, but our main job is going to be serious. So the next recording would be just a starting point for the, for the series, okay? So quickly read this one, make sure you are ready for it. And you know, by, by Friday, I'm going to post another one for you and that would be the starting for the series. And then we continue for the well, probably next two, next two months. Okay, that's it. So study these quickly. If you have any question, let me know. Okay. We need them for the notion of the series. So a sequence is just a function. Is a function is defined on the set of natural numbers. Then we are going to talk about the the, the series depends on the you know sequence. Okay, I'll